After your performance tonight, where do you think that this puts you? Oh, I'm at the top. I'm top two. You know, I feel like my performance today put me up there. You know, uh, I think we're all well aware that the name Terrence Bud Crawford is synonymous with boxing excellence. Finding himself in the top division amongst the most honorable fighters comes easy to this sporting champion. An undeniable living legend in his own right, this competitive boxer is known around the world for his ferocity and appetite for the game. He's scored tons of victories, knockouts, and death-defying moments in a career that spanned more than 10 years. Today, we're going a little further in talking about Terrence Crawford's most embarrassing moments. But before we get into the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel with notifications on so you don't miss any of the new videos we post. Terrence Allen Crawford was born on the 28th of September 1987 in Omaha, Nebraska, United States, to Debbie and Terry Crawford. The young Crawford found a love for boxing whilst attending Bryan High School with his trainer routinely organizing events for young teens who were unhappy with life at home. Bud liked to see you hurt, his trainer recalled in an interview with CNN. You see, the young Bud became emboldened during his early and teenage years. It's been said amongst the sporting elite that Crawford has a foul disposition, which he seemingly uses to further his intent. He derives pleasure from other people's pain and uses disrespectful slurs from opponents to wake up the muster inside of him. He's able to attract a greater round average this way, causing more injuries and mortifications. Despite all this, Bud has had an extremely successful career in the boxing world. He's been voted as Boxer of the Year twice by ESPN and once by the Boxing Writers Association. He's also been ranked the world's second most active boxer behind Vasily Lomachenko. He is the first ever male boxer to hold all four major world titles in boxing, WBA, WBC, IBF, and WBO, occurring at the same time. But it's not all championship wins and TKOs in Crawford's world. He's also no stranger to a scandal or two, both inside and outside of the ring. Terrence has been in a relationship with longtime girlfriend Alindra Person for several years now. They have several children together, including two daughters and three sons. The pair are no strangers to cheating scandals, being covered heavily on numerous occasions by the media. On one occasion, it's claimed that person physically assaulted Crawford's side chick. In September 2016, Crawford was declared guilty and charged with multiple counts of services theft, criminal scathe, assault of the third degree, and trespassing. The assault and theft charges were later dropped. A sentence hearing date was set for December 15th. The incident took place at a local car body shop. Crawford had made a partial payment but refused to pay the remainder after he wasn't satisfied with the work being done and the amount being charged. He started to lower the car himself, damaging the hydraulic lift and began arguing with the attendant. At the hearing, Crawford was sentenced to 90 days in jail but would be serving 53 days. The ferocious fighter was incarcerated for only eight hours before being released after his attorney posted a $10,000 pawn. Moving on now to the infamous Crawford vs. Khan fight that ended with allegations of cheating. Khan claims that the low punch that Crawford delivered in the sixth round left him unable to move. A wounded Khan spent the entire Saturday night after the match on the defensive. The challenge for Terence Crawford's welterweight title ended when Khan was floored and defeated by TKO. In the post-fight press conference, a markedly battered Khan found himself on the back foot once again, amid a flurry of inquiries over the controversial finish. I'm not one of the guys to quit, Khan said. I would rather be knocked out. I'd rather go to war. If I quit, I would not be here sitting in front of you. I'm just not that type of guy. That's why I came here. I wanted to face you guys, and I wanted to face Terrence as well. I tried. That's all I can say. Khan had a tough five rounds in the lead up to the round six TKO. Some say he was badly treated by Crawford, who may have used underhand tactics to accomplish his win. To achieve his win, Crawford delivered a left-handed blow well below Khan's belt 40 seconds into the sixth round. The controversy starts here. Boxing rules state that whether a blow landed on the leg like Crawford believed, or squarely in the groin area as Khan said, the challenger was entitled to up to five minutes of recovery time. The referee, David Shields, ruled it as an accidental low blow. Hmm. The official version goes a little something like this. Virgil Hunter, Khan's veteran trainer, asked for proceedings to be halted 
about 40 seconds after time was called. Many skeptics, including Crawford, thought that this was all a ploy to remedy Khan's reputation and bruised ego. Crawford didn't think that Khan was as enthusiastic about soldiering on as he made out, given the way the fight had turned out until this point. I would never quit, Khan insisted as he recounted the final sequence. At times, made a sound as if he was trying to convince himself. I'd rather get knocked out. I'm one of those fighters who'd rather get knocked out in fights. I've been knocked out because I've tried to win fights. A tense exchange was recorded between the two fighters immediately after the TKO announcement in the post-fight press conference. Crawford fans, who had by this point started gathering inside the conference room, expressed their frustrations towards the anticlimactic end. The fans said that they were more unsatisfied with the ending than the champion himself, which could have been geared towards either Khan or Crawford. Khan later said that he distinctly remembers feeling the sensation from the punch in his stomach was left incapacitated. He repeatedly said that he would rather go out on his shield than concede. I was in pain. I couldn't move. I could not continue. I'm not one to give up in any fight. I will fight till the end. Good sportsmanship aside, what do you think about this controversial win for Terence Crawford? You think it was a deserved knockout or do you think that Amir Khan is justified in calling out underhand tactics? Some suspect that Crawford has had a falling out with his promoter's top rank. If you know Crawford, you probably know that he's not much of a talker. He lets his actions do the speaking for him, which is perfectly fine, but the 88-year-old promoting legend Bob Arum seems to think otherwise. Arum claims to have built Crawford from the ground up, citing his lack of interest in promotion as the main reason for his guidance. He signed Crawford way back in 2011 and is credited with bringing the superstar boxer out of the shadows. Arum is also known for signing and promoting powerhouses such as Floyd Mayweather Jr. and Oscar De La Hoya, who were both excellent marketing gold. Crawford doesn't have this, nor does he want it. But will it hurt him in the long run? If people can't follow his story and connect with him, what chance does he have of winning over the hearts of the nation to become the people's champion? Crawford extended his contract with top rank in 2018, with his contract expiring in October 2021. However, if Aram's statements are anything to go by, we don't think there will be any re-signing congregation. He's got to promote like unified lightweight champion Teofimo Lopez does. He's got to promote like former featherweight titleist Shakur Stevenson does. Like May Weather did, like Manny Pacquiao did. If he doesn't, then who needs him? He may be the greatest fighter in the world, but hey, I ain't going bankrupt promoting him, Aram told The Athletic. Lastly, we want to mention the Crawford vs. Brooke fight, which left Bud victorious. Closing the show with a fourth round knockout, Brooke looked fantastic ringside in his first return to the welterweight since losing his IBF title in 2017. However, he just couldn't get his stride and Crawford was able to get the better of him. I was just trying to gauge the distance and I was trying to find my rhythm in between getting my distance together, Crawford said. That's why it was so competitive earlier. I couldn't get my shots off. Crawford had this to say about the historic fight. I just stepped forward a little and tried to throw a little more punches, but not too much, and I caught him a couple of times. That about wraps up our video for today. Help us to start a conversation and sound off in the comments section down below. We want to know if you agree with the controversies that we mentioned on our list today. What do you think of our top picks? Do you think that Crawford is as controversial as he's made out to be, or do you think he's just had a bad time with the press? Whatever your thoughts are, we want to know. Tell us what you think in the comments section below and please don't forget to leave a like on this video. Subscribe to our channel and turn on that notification bell so that you can keep up to date with the great videos that you know and love.